I'm John Alder for DIYPhotography.net. We're back at the Black Magic stand with Stuart. We're going to talk about the new updates in DaVinci Resolve 16. So, hi again, Stuart. Hello. How are you? Yeah, I'm really good. Good, good. So, Black Magic's just released DaVinci Resolve 16 beta. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us about some of the new features that have come in? Yeah, this is this is probably the most significant update that we've done, certainly within the edit part of um, DaVinci Resolve, in that. DaVinci Resolve over the course of the last few years has really developed into a very comprehensive editing system um, as well as obviously colour, fusion, fairlight. But what we started to do was really kind of take a step back and started to view the edit process to really wonder, we really started to wonder to ourselves, well how can we make this process even quicker? Now the thing is, is that you can keep adding features and adding features all of the time but what happens is if you're not careful, the interface starts to become too cluttered or things start to become difficult to find or you have um, secondary and third level menu systems which is something that we don't really want to do. So what we actually did is we developed a whole new page within DaVinci Resolve that was non-destructive to the current edit page. So what that means is that the, edit, the existing edit page still remains but there's now a new page which is called Cut. Now what Cut is, is it's focused entirely on the speed of editing. So when you're working within high-end commercials, when you're working with quick turnaround TV series, when you're looking at news, uh, when you're looking at um, short format work that needs to be uploaded quickly, say, to the internet, one of the things that you really want to focus on is the speed of getting your content down to a timeline, edited, and then delivered. What you might not have the time to do is sit there and finesse each of those edits to make them absolutely perfect. So what we've actually done is that in the cut page, We've incorporated a whole load of intuitive um, and AI-based tools, as well as looking at the old linear way of editing, to try and make sure that every single movement that you make on the edit page is productive. Because what we don't want to do is we don't want to waste time by having functions that include things like scrolling up and down, zooming in and out, moving up and down layers. We don't want to have to keep on going in and out to get media. What we want to do is we want to have one simple interface that has all of it. So the interface has been designed in such a way that your media is first easily accessible, but secondly that you can flip between your source and your timeline very, very simply. But at all times when you drop media down onto the timeline, the, ent the entire timeline is visible um, in front of you. What you can then do is you can then work in smaller segments of that timeline to place your edits and place your transitions. What you also have the ability to do is take all of your media, drop that into um, the, um, the program window and actually create what we call a source tape where all of your bins, all of, sorry, all of the footage in your bins is actually viewable as in one timeline. So you can actually go down that timeline, creating an out point, creating an out point, creating an out point and actually drop those down to the timeline or from sequential files. Oh, right. Now in addition to that, we've also put some other features in there as well where there are points in which you're dropping media down to the timeline where if the playhead is within a certain distance from the, the edit point, it knows that you're trying to insert or add an edit to that point. So what will happen is, is as you move that down or you assemble that down to the timeline, it will automatically go and drop that in, at the point where it would suggest that that point would be for that insert of that edit. Now, Another key feature of using some of the, the AI elements of it are that if you're working with footage that is time code matched, what you can actually do is you can take that footage into the program window, you can look for, say, a close-up shot, and you can create an in and out point, and then you can smart assemble or smart edit that into the timeline. And because your time code knows that you are looking at a particular point in time on that clip, it will actually add that above the clip that is in the timeline at the same time code point. Oh, right. So again, this is automating this process quite considerably. Now to go along with that, we've also designed um, a hardware panel, which is the, um, the Resolve uh, keyboard. Um, now, 
that is um, a keyboard that has all the functions of Resolve mapped, sorry, the editing keyboard mapped to the edit functions of DaVinci Resolve. You also have um, a search dial on there as well, so you can navigate up and down the timeline, mark in, mark out, switch between your source and your program and your timeline. Um, you can assemble all of your edits. And the purpose there is that you don't necessarily have to use a mouse and keyboard. It can all be driven from a single panel. So we've really focused on speed. We've really focused on efficiency. We've done it in a non-destructive way. Um, and what we're trying to do is ensure that you can really lay down a complex edit in a very short short time and deliver that very simply. So that the, the keyboard panel, that's a new product? Entirely new product, Entirely yeah. New. And are, are they available now to pre-order? So, so we're showing this um, with a view to deliver in August. Um, it's, called the, um, it's called the Resolve Editor Keyboard and um, it, was, it retails um, at $995. Um, that's gonna be available August time, we think. Uh, we're pretty far down the development path of that. We're actually showing it and demoing it at the show, um, and that will be available through our traditional channels. Brilliant, brilliant. So what are the changes that we come to resolve in color and fusion and fairlight? So there are some significant ones, um, which are things that are tidying up maybe some of the bits that people have asked about. For example, one of the key ones and one that I'm really pleased about <laughs> is the ability to work with different timelines at the same time using different resolutions and frame rates. Right. Now, one of the frustrations in the past was once you set your project setting at a certain frame yeah. rate, you were stuck to that. That now has changed, so that's, that's, a, big, so that's a big one. Um, in addition to that, on the color page, we've um, got a new neural engine in there as well, which means that we've got things like enhanced auto color, we've got enhanced color match in terms of if you're matching one clip to another clip. Um, and then we've added some really cool features as well, which, um, uh, which completely blow my mind which are things like object removal where now what you can do is you can create a power window around an object and you can track that object so if it moves say through the frame you can actually then apply the object removal to remove that item from that frame what the um, what the process is doing is it's looking at the frames around and the pixels around that object and determining what the replacement should be mm -hmm. so in the demo that we're actually showing here in the show there is a scene where there is a guy in the background who kind of moves across the frame and we and we physically move that guy out of the frame. Oh wow, brilliant, brilliant. Is that any other new features that have come? Um, I mean, they're the main ones with, within DaVinci Resolve. Right. Um, you know, there's I think about 150 small fixes that we've wow. done. The big one we'll, is... We'll link to the changes list in the description. Um, <laughs> the, the big ones in terms of um, the, the neural engine and, and the, the AI process is something we've worked very heavily on. One, one thing to actually mention, which I did miss out, which is a really cool feature too, is that um, we now have the ability to do facial recognition when, oh, wow. um, when detecting um, clips within the, uh, sort of the, media, the media bins. So you can actually, um, say, open up a folder, you can select a number of files, you can actually do facial recognition, and what it will do is it will highlight all of the different faces you can then label all of those and it will drop all those into smart bins. So can you identify individual with people with Absolutely. that? Absolutely. Like, give me all the clips with that guy and oh Absolutely. wow. Absolutely. That's very, very handy. Yeah. <laughs> brilliant, brilliant. Well, thank you very much, Stuart. Yeah, no problem. That's available to download now through the it is. website? It is. It's at public beta stage now. It's not the finished piece, but it's um, it's there for people to download and, and work with. One thing we would say is that whilst it's in public beta, just be mindful of the fact that if you've got existing projects, you know, don't go updating midway through a project, yeah. back your database up. Um, but you know what we're looking for in this this period of time now is that people offer their feedback, people find the bugs that are in there, we get that information back, and then we hope for a full release probably around about July time. Brilliant, brilliant. I'm John Aldridge for DIYPhotography.net. We're here at the NAB 2019 on the Black Magic booth. Check the link in the description below. We're giving away over $8,500 worth of cinema goodies. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.